Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we have uh, quite a few English speakers in the crowd, so I suppose we're going to uh, speak in English this afternoon. And uh, my name is Abbas Emir Valley, and I'm the curator of the show. And you have next to me Hassam and Samuel, who's a curatorial assistant here at OGR, and he was uh, my 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 half over here helping me with uh, with preparing the show and we have Rokni and Ramin uh, so the conversation is going to be between us it feels a little odd speaking in these microphones but I think it's better for your translation Maria Cristina is everything okay in the booth do you guys hear everything se si. se ascolta non se ascolta si sí? bene uh, so, uh, the way that uh, we thought that we would uh, kind of uh, speak today was instead of really doing a presentation or doing a talk was to have a conversation uh, amongst each other about uh, the processes and the way that um, we arrived to preparing for the show and how we decided to present the works that you see and, and the way in which they have been presented. We have quite a few of our colleagues in the, in the audience uh, whom we worked with so closely in doing the show. Uh, so we will refer to them as well because they can certainly uh, chime in and help. So I think um, Samuel, Samuel and I are just going to have a little bit of conversation, but maybe, maybe for the people that don't know us, maybe you can start a little bit by talking about uh, your journey just living and working in Dubai and the process of your methodology for just starting to work and how you think of projects and how you design them and how you approach them and, and how you start the, the execution process. How does the process start and end for you. Um, yeah, we've been living in Dubai for the past nine years. We know each other from almost mid 90s, and um, or early 90s actually. And um, uh, it was we decided to actually. Uh, I mean, it actually, it was not a decision. It was really it happened very organically that we started working together as a collective, as a, um, um, working together um, when we moved to Dubai. Rokhne and Rami moved to Dubai earlier in 2009 and I joined them a little bit later. And um, we, kind of, we were kind of working a little bit separately, but then somehow it came uh, to our attention that what we are doing, we are already working this way together, we are wor because we were working and living together, and um, because you started out having individual practices. Because we started out having individual practices, and um, so um, then this kind of working together, it came very organically, and then we we just continued um, that. Um, but in te in terms of uh, so so one thing that we started just the starting off this, it was we started with where we live. We try to kind of combine um, the city that we live all inside the house. Something that kind of it's a, a spectrum of uh, theater, library, um, a studio, um, a research center. So basically everything we do in the house. I don't know. I, I gave a. Uh, there, there images are images. So and maybe they can see. While we're speaking, you can see images of actually their home, and you'll recognize um, many of the works that you see in the exhibition, in the home, and how they live with with the their works and works of other artists that they collect on so the screen. So the, the, the home is so this kind of uh, the home is, and also the home is really not a home. It's it's more about it's this project. It is a pro the whole thing, the whole journey that we started until now, and I don't know, I mean, that, that as it is continuing, it is a project by itself. Everything else inside it is the process of, it is just a process that is happening and it's keep continuing to roll. Um, 
so the images that you see, it kind of shows, you know, there are very some, some images, not everything, but um, that it, it is always in constant change based on what we are going to exhibit, I mean, on the project that we have, like for instance, we're going to have a show, we were going to have a show in different places, you know, Kunsthalle Zurich, I say Boston, and so on. And so we would use the house as almost like a sketchbook for our, for, for the upcoming shows. And, and, and same we did, semi not because here is really massive and uh, we couldn't really do this, it wasn't really fitting in our sketchbook, but um, so yeah, that's, that's how we kind of, um, that, that's, that is the project by itself, this kind of uh, working and living together for this, long, for this past nine years and continuing, it is a project by itself. And also, uh, you know, the one thing that uh, make us get together as a collective, not collective, we don't call ourselves, uh, we don't put uh, for the collective, you know, uh, name. You know. So one thing, it started with that question, the 20, uh, 21st century artists, which, you know, the artist which belongs to our time, uh, what's the specification of the how we can describe the artists from 21st century and what's the, uh, what's, what terms are uh, divided mm -hmm. them, that geniuses which uh, conquered the 20th century and uh, all the time, you know, uh, it's a, they're rendering a one idea and uh, working on it. So we try to uh, rethink about the whole notion of the artist, you know, so by get rid of that artist, we get together and share the things without suppressing the individualism, you know, the individual selves. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe to, maybe let's be more specific, like let's talk about uh, w one of the floor pieces. Maybe we talk about the Sea to Dawn project since that's the one that is the newest work and may maybe you walk us through the whole, that process of creating the floor, the sculptures, the film and Sea to Dawn and the video work, Where's Waldo? Maybe we go through one process and you tell us where the first thought came from and then how does it evolve? In that, we can talk about how you do it. So it's a, com you know, we never, uh, the way that we describe our discipline from, uh, you know, uh, we, when we get together in Dubai, uh, we describe a discipline and uh, for ourselves it's like a ritual and, and uh, we quite uh, faithful to that. Uh, so it's, uh, we never, uh, an exhibition is a kind of, a kind of interruption for us because we keep working on the work constantly and we developing a different uh, angles, you know, we've grown in a different angles. And also when uh, I, I was mentioning also the fact that, you know, the, the whole practice came together organically, it's because uh, when, we start, when we start working on, on a project or something, or, or just, you know, on, on a daily basis, we never aim for a final something. We start just working and we just accumulate ideas, we just put ideas on top of each other. We don't erase each other's idea. We, if there is something that we uh, don't agree with each other, we try to go with that, with those disagreements. I mean, talk, uh, through talking, through actually applying and uh, these things come together and we start, that's why we, uh, we mention it as a bottom up design rather than being an, uh, like for instance, what, what an architect does, they, you know, they design everything on a paper, they, you know, they plan things and then they start building, going down. And the way that our practice works, we don't know what this building's going to look like. We just start building and then sometimes it fails, sometimes it, it just goes up, sometimes in the middle it stops. One year, two years later, we go back to it, we revisit things, and then we continue, you know, uh, building them up and, you know, I mean, and also once, once they go to a show, for instance, after these return back to us, 
we start revisiting them. Right. We, they, they go through but, changes again. They're but not. Before we get to that, let's talk about how did Sea to Dawn come to be? I mean, it is the same, mm. almost, it is also the same kind of approach to, like, for instance, From Sea to Dawn. The From Sea to Dawn, the, the, you mean the, the animation itself? The animation itself yes. mm -hmm. and, and the, the floor. And the, you know, the one thing that uh, we, when we were working on um, uh, a project or uh, some content that uh, we thought we started to accumulate the objects. Sometimes these objects is uh, ordinary objects, daily objects, and also sometimes artworks. And uh, uh, in the one stage, we started to become those objects, you know, that means uh, we, this, uh, the one thing is that we become uh, the, something like a painting machines, we call them Dastga, uh, which is a melodic matrix in Farsi and also uh, something like a device or machine. And this is very important for us to become that, uh, you know, painting machine those objects, uh, but and this desk uh, is uh, contain of those objects which uh, attach to our body, and uh, by attaching them to our body, we restricted in some uh, you know, insights or hearing or movements, uh, and by this restriction, we kind of provoke the other kind of sensibilities of our body. Uh, so for C to, uh, for example, for C to Dawn, there was a, uh, the whole idea was uh, about the, ca uh, we were thinking about the capsule, the hollow spaces, when you are a stranger in one strange place, how you uh, survive or how, uh, um, how you uh, make your ecosystem somehow. So we this painting machine, we become those machines and we start to contaminate the floor. So as you see in the show, there's a, a floor piece which uh, done by this painting machine that I'm calling, uh, talking about. And uh, after that, we started to, uh, you know, working on the... Um, uh, by kind of repetition re, yeah. and by kind of repetition and uh, kind of consistency, you start knowing your limitations, you start, you know, uh, actually provoking the sensibility, other sensibilities, and you start uh, making it better and better as, you, as we proceed. And um, um, so, yeah, the, the painting machines that Rukni is talking about, they're, that's how they're actually, you know, walk, uh, you know, making the floors by different acts, by adding, uh, objects to themselves and um, and that's that's how they and also sometimes they also uh, uh, collect some objects like for instance if we are having showing the like from sea to dawn we look for mm -hmm. other things that are related to that specific you know show so if it is an artwork by other artists we try to s search it if we know somebody else has done this before we search it and we find that artwork and we try to acquire that artwork for that specific reason. And, and this is how also our collect, I mean, the, the very humble collection that we have came, has come together. And through these kind of research and, uh, and um, basically the machines collect them. I guess I, I think it's just important to not only your process, uh, which we're, I think, understanding, but the thought process behind the pieces. Why focus on, in the instance of Sea to Dawn, on the refugees around the world that are escaping? You know, you, so you started saying you thought about a capsule and about living, but yeah. why specifically this topic? Uh, why did it come to your mind? Why did you want to work on that? What, what is it that you wanted to um, present when you became rather preoccupied with this and it became the basis for an entire show? Uh, you know, for, uh, as I say, you know, uh, in the, uh, one of the sp uh, specificity of our time is uh, th that uh, notion of distraction. You know, we keep, uh, distra our body keep distracted by, uh, by the different 
uh, informations, you know, uh, like um, the in, uh, uh, or we bombarded by these informations, which sometimes we don't need what to do with them. So uh, our replicated uh, lifestyle, you know, is a kind of uh, in, uh, space to rethink about the, uh, these boxes, this definition of the words which we keep using them and they, uh, they worth nothing for, uh, you know, they, they are unable to uh, make something new. So we keep repeating uh, all the, uh, you know, definition and mindsets which belongs to the 20th century. So uh, by become trio, we kind of uh, get rid of the, that notion of opposition in the dialectical thought. So we become three, so we have uh, three points to look at the matters. So one of the things that we keep collecting is the information, this information which all of us consuming all the time, and uh, uh, especially media through our devices, you know, uh, they, with these moral messages all the time, you know, there's a hidden moral message which, you know, trying to repeat itself, and we believe on that. As you see in the uh, exhibition, we started with the, uh, Maids by Jean Genet, which is, a, is about the imitation of the power and how you imitating the power and you become the power. And s most of these uh, words, uh, it's, uh, we use them, but, but we don't know actually what they are, what's the meaning of them. You know, they are useless, they are nonsense. You know, so, uh, the, uh, like, uh, for us, uh, working on the Sea to Dawn was to rethinking the issues uh, and the imagery that we all consume all the time and somehow subvert it and by uh, painting, uh, painting on top of them, uh, we apply an interruption for the audience to rethink about the matter. So, okay. Like, uh, you usually uh, speak about Arrangement effects that you're looking for in your work, and so yeah, I know uh, Brecht is like a constant reference in what you do, both in like uh, the uh, video works, but also like in other ways. So there's always like a, uh, I would say, an obstacle that is present, and yeah, if you can elaborate on the idea of of that, of, you know, like uh, making. A, I would say uncommon, something that it's always in front of us, but we are not aware of. Exactly. Um, also, the idea of becoming, becoming uh, a creature or uh, becoming those painting machines is that to uh, get distance from me as, uh, or ourself as a subject. Mm -hmm. So you, you become those objects by mimicking something as a machine and uh, you can see yourself in a, another angle. So, uh, for this exhibition, you see three, four parts that each of them has their own dastga, has their own painting machines, and uh, and you can you you see the world. You know the objects that they uh, collect, the way that they move. By the doc uh, we have a documentation on each floor. Uh, which give the information about them, and then uh, you know the, some works. Uh, usually, they are painting machines, so they are doing art. You know, in the, not art, but as a you know something like art. You know, it's like a, you know like painting, like visual art. You know. Yeah, that's also interesting because you are really freely using art, and that's like, for example, really uh, clear in the first uh, video where actually real and proper artworks are becoming props. Mm -hmm. And so that's also like something that is interesting, like the way you use art as like an everyday object, really. And so yeah. that's... So yeah, one of, one of the main strategies that to, uh, you know, as, to get, uh, as an artist, to get distance from, to be an artist. So 
you can s looking at the different angle. I think uh, if we want to enter a new century, I, we, we have to uh, rethink about the whole definitions, you know, to, to looking for art again, you know, to, uh, to not, uh, to find something that not detached from the people, you know, and art is for the human and is come from the human and it should be, ha con contain something for the human, you know, so it, it should, it shouldn't be something just uh, for the huge spaces or, you know, for the value, the, you know, it should be, yeah. I, I, uh, it's pouring outside and, and in our culture we believe that, um, in the Persian culture, Iranian culture, we believe that that brings prosperity, so I think we're going to be really prosperous because uh, <laughs> today is the first day that it had to pour like this. Um, so uh, the elements are overpowering us. But does everybody, is everybody hearing? Is it, are you, is it easy? Not so much. That's what I thought. Okay, so for the, I, I'm afraid that you have to come, so you need to speak up because they can't hear it. Can you hear better now? Yeah, okay. So maybe it would be a little interesting for those of you that weren't with us during the last two weeks for us to tell you a little bit of the story of how we approached this exhibition uh, because uh, this exhibition was approached in a bit of a different fashion than maybe the other in instances in which you've worked at. Uh, be due to the, to the very, very privileged space of Ojiar and uh, the 1,200 square meters that it, you know, it, it, it's, it's of its space, it was important, you know, because of the number of works and the amount of works that you would have present, that it, it was important to the artists and it was important to us to not um, do a mid-career survey of any kind or a, a, a retrospective of some fashion, which is very easy when you're presenting so many works in one space. Uh, so then it really, uh, for me, when I started approaching, the first time I came, I'd seen the space in, in November when I was here for the opening of the, of the second show, which was a beautiful group show. Um, so I had seen the space, but there, there, it was an opening, so it was massive. I really couldn't appreciate. There was a lot of structures, and there were also, this area was used, and some other areas, so I, I wasn't sure. But I came back in January, and my colleague, Barbara Casavecchia, was uh, installing her show with Susan Hiller, and I got to, um, I got to sit in the space alone, and uh, I also got to uh, watch the team that is led by Francesco Fassone, the architect that we worked so closely with, with um, uh, Andrea and Alice and uh, Jessica and Jasmine. Uh, to, I watched them work and, I, and this was very helpful to me to see how they were planning for that that show because it was important to be respectful of the architecture. That's something that I, as a curator, am, am very careful uh, to um, not want, just like they want to remove any importance from themselves and put it on, not, for them not to be the subject. I wanted, I wanted the, the work, obviously, to be center stage, but I wanted it to live and coexist within the architecture in, in a harmonious way. I, I also wanted uh, for their works and their stories to take a new life in how it would be uh, perceived because of this uh, privileged space. It's truly, it's challenging, but it's very, very privileged to be able to, to make an exhibition in a space like this. So architecture was, was a big part of this. So I think m when we started just getting a, uh, the thought behind how we would be able to not build it full of walls to be able to show you all everything was, was really uh, the challenge. And then, uh, so 
I think even in my first sketches, there were more walls, and then slowly we started working together, and it was really a process of being able to find that harmony in, in the space without building too much, but just enough uh, to create a new reading. So the three spaces that you see very, the three ma the major floor spaces, and then there is the individual walls, which um, really aren't so individual, but we will call them the individual walls. That's how we looked at them at the beginning. Um, they have been works that have been presented in, in, uh, in the past, but never, but as Hassan was saying at the beginning, and maybe you can expand on this, when the works come back to the home, they get worked on again. They, they take on maybe a, a new thought process, a new role. The objects are, are, are given a new identity in some ways. Uh, the color palettes change slightly to indicate a different kind of a code for you to read. So that was, so, so none of it looks like any of the exhibitions that have been there before. Um, not that it doesn't look like any, but it doesn't really, it's not identical. And then of course, particularly in the, in the first floor space, uh, which had been seen at Constale Zurich, uh, the project maids, we made this beautiful new wallpaper, which is the first time they've ever made a wallpaper. And we, we worked with a talented gentleman in Paris, Guillaume, and uh, so maybe tell us a little bit about the story about the, the image that we see in the wallpaper, as that's the first time that it's been seen. Uh, we put uh, some uh, old, uh, old nuts uh, beginning of the, uh, like 2000, from the coronation of the, uh, the her, uh, Queen, Queen Elizabeth in England, and start to, uh, and start to, daily we start to photographing, after we use it as a daily uh, dish for the, breakfast and uh, food. And then after that, uh, the remains, we start to taking photos. So it's like a one year, one year and a half picture of the plate that usually there's a food that uh, it's, it's, it's a finished act of eating, it's finished. So what remains in a plate, we start to eating. So it, and then start to photographing and, and uh, this is the base for the wallpaper, the image the image of the wallpaper. So it's a, per it's a performative uh, daily uh, pictures. Yeah. So, which is interesting because, which is interesting because as a performative daily, then it goes into a static object. Yes. Um, and that static object now kind of has captured a moment of their life and how they live the everyday. And so ostensibly you can buy that wallpaper and have it in your home available. And, um, and then you have a piece of work that actually is, is an object, but it's also a, a thought process and a way of living. So that kind of added a new layer aesthetically to the, to the whole project. Um, and then... Um, yeah, I want to have, we have a, uh, you know, we have a campaign in the house to not to use the plastic Bravo. dishes. <laughs> Bravo. So we started to collect, you know, uh, porcelains in one stage, like a mycin, porcelain, especially mycin porcelains. And uh, why mycin? We by chance we uh, we work there once for for like Where? a residency uh, workshop. Real, and yeah, yeah. Uh, we had the privilege to work with the, the, in there. So we get, you know, the cra attached to the craft and the, uh, you know, the, when you have that craft in your hand and you want to use it daily, used of it, is uh, suddenly the manner, the attitude of you with the object is completely uh, yeah. different, you know, so. After a while, we, uh, when we saw these uh, porcelains of, uh, with the uh, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth on, uh, as a pattern, so we start to continue that campaign, you know, so it, it, it's coming, uh, you know, so we use them as a uh, daily object. And also, it is also one of the examples that I was saying, you know, we don't have 
any aim for what we do like because for the past one year yeah. and a half we were just taking photos of them not knowing that what where they going to end up or what we going to do with them we were just taking photos of them at night and only with our phones and for this project once you asked us you said do you want to do a wallpaper for this project and we said yes and then we were discussing and then all of a sudden said oh you know let's 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 do use these photos so it was really it was again it was that aspect of uh, i was just you know it was a good example for how we do things and we never know where we're going to yeah. end up and how we're going to end up or what we're going to end up yeah yeah i think like this way of working is also like reflected in many of the objects that you collect and i'm thinking particularly to a collection of fluxus objects that you mm -hmm. collect and yeah i think there are like so many things in common like yeah. why are you attracted to those yeah, there's a one part which we did uh, in the exhibition which we dedicated to the flu uh, fluxus uh, movement and you know the small objects that they make as they were, uh, you know, they, they were great artists uh, doing the, col uh, uh, the, their collective was international movement. And some of them, you know, they, uh, they never gained that recognition. Uh, so we thought that it's, it's nice to, uh, you know, as a, you know, because part of our practice is deal with the daily weight of living, you know, existence. So it's, uh, uh, so I think the fluxes as a uh, you know root would be good to uh, bring it to the attention of the audience, and uh, so we you can see the uh, books, you can uh, um, read the books about. Uh, we put the uh, you know a shelf, a bookshelf, with the you know uh, roots of also uh, roots of the fluxes movement, like uh, Marcel Duchamp or uh, John Cage. Bertolt Brecht, uh, Samuel Beckett, uh, Mal Stefan Mallarmé. So, uh, that I think uh, one of the, uh, you know, the whole uh, uh, notion that we work on it is uh, what impurity, mm -hmm. the impurity that you uh, can find in the uh, cinema, because in the cinema you never uh, you have the. Uh, different, uh, you know, the combination of arts, but they are uh, not specifically in the in their form, pure form, like a music mixed with the theater or painting with the music. Uh, so, uh, when we set the exhibition, I think it's important to give the information about the other artists, to be generous, to uh, use the whole space to inform people you know that's a, i think that's a, a good thing for art to do you know to uh, it can it can do to inform people to um i think that um yeah i i completely agree with you so 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 to continue kind of the journey through the exhibition for you so then you go into the second floor space which was a project that was done for ICA Boston mm -hmm. And uh, when, so as you approach it, so if you, if you think about it um, going in, because you can read the exhibition in both directions. You can read it going forth or coming back. So they're just different interpretations. Uh, we, if you look at their work, you see all these layers. You know, not only is it the materiality of everything, everything is so kind of, it comes to life. And uh, it, it's very palpable. Uh, you want to in some ways touch it, but don't because Francesca will really not like that very much. She was, she, she, she's the wonderful priestess of, of registry for us and, and uh, was very involved in the process. It was the most intricate process I've seen in my life. We love her. And, um, and uh, so, uh, you know, so... I wanted that materiality to also show up in the architecture of the show. And that's when I wanted to put some fabric. So I started talking to Francesco about fabric and I was obsessed with fabric. But then there's this thing called budget. So I don't know if there's any curatorial students here, but you know, budget, budget is big, budget is very important. And budget said that there was no money for, for, for fabric and I couldn't get fabric. But this kind, this kind of obsession continued, and I, 
and I and I kept kind of bringing it up and and the beauty of you know when you when you're in sync with someone which I have to say Francesco I'm very much in sync with you keep bringing it up and eventually it's either out of creativity or because he just doesn't want to listen to me anymore he's like let me see let me go to the Teatro Regia and uh, see if I can find some fabric you know there and I was like great, maybe they can lend it to us. And uh, when he went to the Teatro Reggio um, storage spaces, they had this beautiful backdrop that you see off of the second floor that goes further up than the four meters where everything else is at. And they gifted it to us. So uh, what we did is we, we took, you know, we, we had done a 3D for the boys because we, you know, I was between Mexico City and Berlin, they're in Dubai, Samuel Francesco and the team are here in uh, Turin, so it was really international collaboration, you know, uh, and uh, we started looking at it, and, uh, but it was only here when we, two weeks ago, opened it up and it took the entire, entire room, the backdrop took the entire uh, square footage of this room. That's how big it was. It was gorgeous. And we started looking at it. And then once uh, Ramin Rokhni came, because Hassam came a few days early, we started thinking about how we would um, be altering it so that it could dialogue with the floor and it could dialogue with, with the work. <laughs> and, and so maybe you can talk a little bit about your feeling, because that's kind of also a first time that something like that has happened, no? For us was a challenge because uh, all the time that before this exhibition we emphasized to not to be, our installation not to be uh, theatrical. Yes. In terms of lighting and also using the theater material. And, and as one of our challenge was that these two objects, like a lighting, theatrical lighting and also the backdrop of the theater comes to the picture, came to the picture. And the, this is one of our uh, things that earlier we were uh, talking about, that uh, we see the ideas accumulate on top of each other. And if the other come, like a, you as a curator, uh, Francesco as an uh, uh, architect. So they are uh, next, to, uh, next, next to us in front instead of in front of us. So they change the direction of our thinking also. So they, they, they make the arrow push it somewhere else. So, so that's why we start to thinking about and then accepting that, uh, that uh, objects, like lighting and that project backdrop. The is kind of continuing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So the whole project is continuing, you know? So uh, there is a, now we have another Another uh, friend. Object, <laughs> Another which, friend yeah, in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, that's why we never think that we finish something. We, you know, like yeah, a, it's keep finish going. that exhibition. We, all of them are still there, you know, this painting machine. Uh, each time we need them, they, they're going to come and paint or, you know, we, we can, they are thinking tools. You know, they are not, it's a, uh, you know, it's becoming object and, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, it's a uh, kind of back and forth between object and subject, you know. So. And with each yeah. exhibition, the, these painting machines becoming a bit debugging again and then use yeah. it for another, going I, in another level. So. And I think it's very, uh, the whole result is very related to the uh, uh, Big Rock Candy Mountain, the, uh, you know, the moving painting. It has that kind of sense to, you know, it's about how you destruct something, but actually by destructing something, you make something, you know, you give the, uh, you create something, you know, it's, it has that notion, you know, so it's, it's and, and actually that brings us um, to all of the video and the film projections and, and, and those decisions were completely advised and supported by Paolo, who was a wonderful advisor to work with uh, on that expertise. Uh, and th therefore that, that projection is being shown with a cutout inside of the backdrop, if you notice it in the exhibition. And, um, and, and, and then on to the other projections that are happening. Um, 
how 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 does it feel to have this many of the projections in one exhibition? How many of the like? How does it feel to have this many of the films? Um, I mean, for the for the space the that we store, have, yeah. Yeah, for for the space that we have, it's. Um, um, I mean, it was. I, uh, it was really. I mean, it was great. It's. It's. But for you, it's not a conflict. Um, I think. It's it, a, I think. The yeah. Impurity of the form. Yeah. I think it, a, okay. it's a. Yeah, it can be. You know, it's art. Uh, it's like our time. You know, you start your day and suddenly, you know, like you, the rain you, starts. Uh, you know, distracted by the informations. You know, so uh, I think uh, one of the um, stage that we have to think about is how we refiguring our bodies in this time. You know, this time of the, uh, you know, information and distraction. How we can. Uh, navigate a new architecture for our mind and for ourselves, you know. So, can you tell us more about like how physically the videos are made, like the yes. uh, moving paintings, as you uh, call them? Um, we, I mean, the the moving paintings are uh, mostly related to the current events that are happening around the world. And uh, so we go, we find through sources, mostly from YouTube, that we find videos and we download them, we put them together, we edit them. And then after we get it to a certain um, minutes, we um, put them into frames and we start printing every page. So they, they're usually between, you know, 3,000 to 6,000 frames, what we have here in this exhibition. And the, so basically they become six or three to 6,000 individual paintings and I mean, or frames or papers. And then we put them on the table and we start um, working on them individually. Maybe in the photos yeah, you saw the chaplains, maybe you saw the chaplains, uh, uh, modern time, and that was really the example of that, that how we work, the three of us, standing one by one, and we go through these frames, and uh, so it is really a very, um, um, I don't know, kind of a strict routine for us that we wake up every morning and we start like working on that until late, and then again the next day, it's, we become that kind of robot, we start using that robotic act all the time, until we are, they're finished. And then once they're finished, we scan them back, we put them back to the computer, and then we start editing them. Um, yeah, um, that, that's how they're that, made. Uh, the one thing that we call them uh, moving painting, not animation, because the uh, movement is not important for us. It's uh, that ups the, uh, the painting stands in front of the, uh, you know, the viewer as an obstacle. So, and it's a trace of three of uh, three bodies, you know, like, um, the, uh, and it's, uh, you know, the, um, that, that beat, that pulse that they have, because each frame is an individual painting. And when you uh, draw a line in one, in the hundred, you know, in, uh, second one, third one, you, when you put them together, the line started to shake, and that shake is resonate your your body. Uh, you yeah. When you start fresh, your li the line that you draw is so much different than right. the number hundred right. that you yeah. draw. So, usually, when we see one uh, a painting, we uh, we comprehend it in a glance of time, you know, and also uh, it's a one body trace. But uh, in these moving paintings, you see the painting unravel through time, and also you see three, uh, in the sa same time, you see the three body trace, traces. So it's a kind of, in, uh, for us, it's, it's a kind of intensifying time, you know. Right. Yeah. Maybe we can open it to questions at 7 p.m. I don't know, Ilaria, you're the boss of this, do, 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 do you in the audience have any questions for all of us? All of us are here. All of us that were here every day are here. No questions? We were that good? You understood everything? 
You're going to come. Yes. There's a question. Can we take the microphone? Can we take the microphone to her? Hi. I actually have two questions. Feel and one is basically about the title of the poem, the quote, the title of the exhibition, the quotation from the poem. Um, I'm wondering why that was chosen, if it had anything, I know William Kentridge has illustrated uh, a, a book of her poetry, and so I'm wondering where that sort of originated and why you chose that. And then also how you all managed to land in Dubai together and if the experience of that city impacts your work. So the, uh, uh, the um, the poem, uh, poetry is a very important, uh, you know, uh, aspect for our practice, you know, the poems. We have a section in the house uh, is dedicated to the poetry because we think through the language and uh, the poetry uh, deregulated, uh, you know, deregulating the language. So it's a uh, best thing, uh, the poetry is the best thing to rethink about the, uh, you know, the uh, art, uh, you know, uh, the rethinking, I think I would say. Uh, and the uh, poem came from uh, Shimborska, uh, which we, when we, uh, back to Tehran, we, uh, uh, it's in, introduced to us by the uh, Christoph Kishilovsky's uh, uh, re, uh, movie called Red. So we know her from that time. But that yeah. specific poem, we kind of thought that is very relevant to what is happening now. And that was really the reason we chose that poem. Yeah. And keep uh, the, an open for interpretation, different... Interpretation. interpretation. So it has that kind of it. idea of the brisht, uh, you know, estrangement because uh, these things, when these things happen, we are doing, uh, you know, this tragedy happen everywhere and, uh, you know, uh, we are uh, doing our life, you know, so am I, uh, should be so emotionally engaged or already I have the distance? So by this distinction, uh, are we going to rethink about the matters or, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for us was, um, sometimes, you know, we, uh, we uh, start our day with the poetry, you know, so it's, a, it's a very important for three of us to share the, to read the poetry and come and share it from everywhere. I think we we share, well, first of all, just so you know, we met in 2010. I don't live in Dubai. I grew up in the United States, and I live between Mexico City and Berlin. But we met in 2010. Uh, we, th we three first met, and we served on a two-year-long jury. And uh, God bless us. And, uh, and it was a jury that had to do with a prize. And we, we were being a little revolutionary on that, on that jury. So we, simply, so we very immediately find, found that we were very simpatico. Um, they're much wittier and smarter than me. But it was just a, we, we realized that we could scheme together and, and um, you know, dictate uh, to the other forces that were on the jury with us. We had Zaha Hadith and Hanzarik Obrist and Shiraz Hushiari and uh, the lovely British artist, uh, Idris Khan, lovely man. Um, so, so that's when we met. And I, uh, for me, it was really important to have the rain of winter in the film, in the show. Rokni tried to kill it many times. Um, you know, he already, you know, there is an individual, there is an area where Fictionville works that are particular to him are presented. And they really, um, I think, were extremely generous to allow me to show it in the way that I wanted to show it because they just didn't want that. You know, they they did not want any personal highlighting of anything. But it was the work that I first got to know, and it's the work that uh, took my breath away. And then everything else came after that, and I just kind of got pulled in. But I think I won't speak for them. I'll let them speak. But when they sent me the 
the poem and they told me the title of the poem. Well, they sent me the title of the poem and then I researched and I, I saw the poem and, I, and it just kind of grabbed my heart because uh, I, I, I do believe that all, all four of us share this notion of being political beings, but in, in our personal non kind of de dogmatic way, I'm an anti, anti, anti plastic person in a kind of crazy way. And, um, you know, but, but more than that about, you know, we are uh, all immigrants. Uh, I'm an immigrant to the United States. I'm a transition generation person. And I grew up in the state of California, and uh, which is mostly pop, you know, which is mostly frequented by immigrants from the country of Mexico. And I now live in Mexico, so it's kind of this beautiful thing that has happened in my life. Uh, so uh, the politics are very real to me. Uh, when when the twin towers were hit, I was in in Turkey and working at the United States Embassy. Um, and and I, I watched those Twin Towers get hit, and I knew my life uh, with a name like Abose was completely uh, ch going to change as of that moment. And, 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 uh, and it has been, um, and I, I lived in a beautiful country called Turkey, and I speak the language, and I love them, and then I've chosen to live in Germany, which has an immigration population from uh, Turkey and has a relationship at oftentimes kind of contentious with that. So it's, I, my life has somehow brought me to these instances where, where this is very real. So I'm probably, as a curator, I'm, I'm very much, I react to work that in no way lectures you, but tries to remind you of realities and to allow you on your own to think about how much you want to be involved, how much you want to say, and how, how, whether you want to be passive or whether you want to be active. And this is when, you know, people say that art can change things. Art can. And, you know, for me, it was a conscious career choice to leave politics completely and fully dedicate myself to the arts. Uh, but th those are real issues, and I think that we're, we're bonded by that a little bit. So even though the aesthetic of this exhibition is really important to us, and the beauty and the majesty of the space and the importance of the works and, and what they bring, it's also important to us the message that you take away uh, from this show to kind of think about your role in this world, your role at this moment in time with the politics of your country, um, and and how how it's dealing with the issues that we're t we're we're touching. And like, maybe like speaking of speaking of poetry, there's also like a room dedicated to a poem. Yes. And so maybe we can also speak about that because once again the process is always really interesting. So it's uh, a piece called Unfaithful Poem. So can you speak about that? Um, yeah, the last room, as you go to the end, it calls Unfaithful Poem. Uh, it's a project that we've been working on for the, uh, for how long? Uh, like four or five years. Four or five years now. Um, and uh, so we, we take, usually we take uh, like a Persian poetry and we, because the, usually the, the, and the poems that we take, they're, you know, usually written, you know, a while back. So for, for that specific instance um, we took a Persian poetry that was by so uh, by uh, Mehdi Akhav Akhavan Sales uh, that was written I think about 50 or 60 years ago and um, but it was very much uh, specific for that time and space so we take the po poem and we translate it by a bilingual Persian English language and then that poem goes to the next person, a native speaker, and then it goes, and then we all have discussions through how it should translate, how much this poem has to relate to our time today. And it goes again to the third person, and again, it's continue and continue. And usually the result is not exactly what the original poem was supposed to mean, because the original poem usually it relates to its time. And 
So this is why we call it unfaithful poem, because we are not really faithful to the original one. But the poem becomes more relevant to what is happening today and to our time today. So, yeah, yeah much like the process of our press release. But, um, <laughs> but um, so do you have any questions? Do you want to know more? If not, I think it's been a bit, a little under an hour. So that's good enough if you want to stop. No questions? We thank OGR, we thank uh, Nicola, and uh, everyone at OGR in particular. Samu, thank you for your existence, and the whole team, Valentina, Paola, uh, Valeria, and everybody on the in-house uh, OGR team. We're really thrilled to have worked with everybody. Um, it was a privilege to do a show like this, and uh, thank you for coming today. In sh yeah, in a short time. We did it in a short time. So... Thank you. Okay.